In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. These are the signs there's a bad spirit in your house. When you start having crazy thoughts, negative thoughts when you get mad, ain't nothing but demons trying to get you to do something wrong so they can control you. Once you do what they say, you don't have no control of your mind or your body anymore. Number two, you have scratches on your body when you wake up. When you dream, you are really out of your body. In our dreams, sometimes we fight demons. We in a fight for our soul. So you're going to wake up with scratches on you. Number three, all of a sudden, your relationship is good. Now it's bad. Y'all argue about everything. Something always getting on your nerves. Something getting on their nerves. Y'all both just can't get along. The devil come in to kill, steal, destroy, right? What you think he trying to do to your relationship in your marriage? Separate y'all from God and bring in confusion. You got to be careful of them thoughts you be having. You thinking they cheat. You thinking they lying. The whole time they ain't even doing nothing wrong. God got somewhere to take you and the devil trying to stop y'all from going there. If you hear a knock on your door and you say, who is it? Who is it? And they don't say nothing. Do not open your door. That's a trick of the enemy. When you open that door, you didn't let something in your house. I'm just saying the true word. I'm not going to lie. There's only one thing in this situation that I do kind of relate to. I, I have... Not anger problems, but I get irritated extremely easily. For example, yesterday when I was trying to record a video, my computer's fan, one of the fans, it's got six fans in it, one of them was making this horrible noise. It was not spinning properly. It just, it sounded bad, and I could hear it in my recordings. It, it really was hindering me a lot. First world problems, I know. But ultimately... I, I tried to calm my anger down, I got a cup of coffee, I drank my coffee, I pulled my computer right here on this desk, took it apart, and I just cleaned it very well, and now it seems to be working fine. So instead of getting too angry and too upset, I, I definitely tried to resolve the situation in a in calm manner. Because I'm not going to lie, I do suffer with not anger issues, but I do get irritated extremely fast. Like this individual said, you might have some bad spirits in your house that's trying to cause that negativity, and I'm doing a lot better in my life as to not get so upset over little pointless things, because for me, that is one of my big problems. Sorry for the rant. Do any of you have any of these kind of situations where even the slightest of inconvenience can basically ruin your whole day, or do you, or do you see past the evil and actually, like, conquer it for the most part? This food, it's taco. We have three tacos from Taco Bell. They smell absolutely delicious. Unfortunately, the ingredients, well, we're talking only 88% of real beef. That means 12% of something else or other stuff. So this is maltodextrin? Yes, yes, you did very well. So what is that? Sugar. Oh. It's a polysaccharide. It basically helps that taco to have some sweetness to it because as Americans, we're addicted to sugar. Torula yeast? Yeast gives it taste. Uh, it's like most of the kinds of things you put yeast in. You know that yeast bread that you eat? Yeast gives it taste, and also yeast helps it to stick together as okay. well. Just like the modified cornstarch. We used modified cornstarch or cornstarch for years, almost like flour, mm -hmm. uh, to help things to stay together. This taco stays nicely in that shell because something had to keep it together and keep it from falling out of the shell and all into your blouse and the places you don't want it. Wow, it kind of sounds like glue. All right, <laughs> the next one is soy lecithin. Well, that is also a, a form of protein. Um, that helps with the acidity. That also helps with the stickiness of it. And it helps with the taste as well. All right, we've got sodium phosphates. I've heard of this. Right, right, because that word sodium should be the key word for you. Salt. Salt. Mm -hmm. You know, we can change it into other forms, but sodium is sodium. So we like salt. Your body actually produces lactic acid. We all produce lactic acid, so it's in every living being. And lactic acid added on gives some neutralization to the meat there, okay. which also helps with the taste. Okay. All right. And then we've got 
caramel color and cocoa powder. Well, we know what caramel color and cocoa powder do. Yeah. Makes it that nice brown color. Because if it didn't have that in it, it would probably be a pale kind of beige. Trahalos? The last three letters of that word, O-S-E, os, sucrose, fructose. When you look at that, you know it's sugar. So basically, that's another form of sugar. That's another ingredient that was added to help it to be sweet. And when we cause things to be sweet, people come back and get them over and over and over again. So we've got sugar in the beginning, sugar in the end, and a bunch of stuff in the middle. That's exactly right. There was at one point a time where I really liked Taco Bell, but it seems like as I get older, it's just not as good as it used to be. It it makes you feel gross. It just, it's not good. I, I am not a huge fan of Taco Bell anymore or any other fast food places, really, like McDonald's, Burger King, all of them I'm not really about. Now, Chick-fil-A, I do like Chick-fil-A. I think they're really good. It's just a shame that they add so much sugar and so much salt and so many things that we just don't need in food to be tasty, as they like to say. Are there any guilty pleasure fast food restaurants that you guys like to actually go and eat to but feel kind of bad after you do? <laughs> Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this every day. And if you see this graph here, you'll see that 13% of the viewers that watch these videos are actually subscribed, while a whopping 80% plus are not subscribed to this channel but keep coming back for more video content. Can you see the visualizations from different angles? Yeah. Can you walk through them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you touch them? Yeah. And you can feel them. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think where the mistakes made is in the term remote viewing. That implies seeing it. You kind of aren't seeing it, but you are. And what it is, it's a compilation of all of your senses. Most people go into remote viewing thinking, I'm going to see something. And so they're totally and completely dependent on their eyes. It's not just your vision, it's your smell, it's your taste, it's your feeling, it's, it's your emotions about it. It's everything that you could possibly sense if you were standing in the middle of it. Everything you could possibly say about it that's right, but it's as though you don't know. You've never seen it before in your whole life. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's kind of masked that way. So where they where they make a mistake is they make a mistake in naming things or having the need to say what it is. No, nobody wants to know what it is. They want descriptors of it that come to you based on your senses, all of your senses. So I'm just going to throw out a hypothetical. Let's say it's a CIA guy, and he wants to know what the spy, the spy was caught in South Africa and turned over to our country, and he's a Russian spy. And when he was caught, they haven't been able to determine how he encrypted his messages going back to Russia. That's more important than catching the spy, okay? So they need to know that. So they come to us with that task. Tell us how he encrypted his messages. So they might write that out. How did the spy from South Africa encrypt his messages? And they put it in a double wrapped opaque envelope. And they put A on it. And I go in a room and they throw the envelope with A on it on a table. And they say, tell us about A. Man, I really find this type of content extremely fascinating. The whole aspect of being able to remote view is extremely interesting to me. Now, I have been recently made aware that remote viewing is potentially an evil act. I was not aware of that at all. I did not know that it was considered actually a not necessarily evil, but kind of taboo thing to do because you are going beyond 
what God intended us to do or something kind of like that, uh, definitely feel free to leave a comment down below explaining further because whenever I, I watch these types of videos, I do get comments saying, hey, you should never practice remote viewing. You should never practice uh, astral projection because it's considered an unholy act. So this is new information to me. But regardless, I don't think you guys would ever have to worry about me attempting to do this because I'm pretty certain I would never be capable of it. I've never had any kind of astral projection or anything like that that I, I can think of that's hap happened to me. But as far as this being an evil act, I don't know if I necessarily believe it to be evil. If, if it was something that we are able to do, then why would why would God allow us to be able to do it if it's something that we shouldn't be doing, you know? I, I feel like it would be a I feel like it would be a talent that God would not even allow us to do if it's something that's not right to do. But again, leave a comment down below explaining further as to why it's uh not a good thing to do because I am very curious about it. I've also heard people call it the silver tether or something like that. I find that very interesting. So let me know. Who do you think really runs the world? You're going to go there, huh, with the question. Who do I think runs the world? Um, so I used to ask the question. I said, who, who's got the most power uh, in America? Is it Congress? Is it president? Is it the CEOs of virtual governments? We're talking Google, Twitter, Facebook. You know, those guys, Amazon, you know, or is it billionaires? Okay. You know, the most richest man in the world. Who's got the most power? And you'd be amazed how few people are president. Does it come and go? You know, the famous quote with Putin that he says, you know, American presidents, you don't have to worry about it. They're going to be there four to eight years. Some suits are running, you know, and run the country behind closed doors. Let's go process and dissect some of these guys that make all the money in the world. Okay. You become a billionaire. And you're still dangerously ambitious, not from a good place, but more selfish place. Okay. You took over an industry. Now you're worth $5 billion. Now you're worth 10. If you're a billionaire, you're the best at what you do in your space for the most part, or you help build the best in that space for the most part. And you're like, well, I want more control. I want more power. I can't be a president. I don't want to be a president because if I run for president, they're going to reveal the things that I've done in my life. And God forbid, if that gets all the light, I don't want that. That's embarrassing. But you know what I'm going to do? What if I can take over the world? This is an interesting video because I've often wondered who really does operate the world if there is an organization. And I don't necessarily believe it to be the Illuminati. I don't necessarily believe it to be Rothschild or BlackRock, which I know those are real organizations for sure. And they have a lot of power. But who operates above them even? Like there's got to be another organization, but they're so secretive, we'll never know their name. They will never allow that name of their organization to ever come out into existence. It's just something we'll never know. Leave a comment on what you guys think. Do you think that there's a higher governing power than what we are completely aware of? Or do you think that it is the main, you know, Black Rock, Vanguard, uh, Rothschilds, or things like that? I would like to know. These people inside the hollow earth have been living there for 2,500 years. There is one continent inside the earth and one ocean, their capital city, which is built around the original lost Garden of Eden. The vegetation grows like a paradise. The people live to be up to 800 years old. They communicate with telepathy. I really like Hollow Earth Theory. I don't have much to go off of. I've recently been introduced to the Hollow Earth Theory about maybe five or six years ago, but I never really looked too far into it. But this stuff is very interesting, and I'm starting to see more and more of it come to light, so we might see more Hollow Earth Theory before you know it. My name is Daryl Anka, and for the past 40 years, I have been channeling an extraterrestrial entity that we call Bashar. Bashar is a first contact specialist from his civilization, which is called Esasani, which is in a parallel reality. If we were to overlap their reality with ours, his planet would be about 500 light years in the direction of the Orion constellation. He's brought through a lot of information to us over the last 40 years, and we're going to explore and share some of that information today in this series. My experience with him began in 1973 when I had two broad daylight UFO sightings here over Los Angeles 
which started investigating the idea of what that was all about and led me to the understanding that Bashar and I have made an agreement to do this channeling before this life. So we would like to present that information to you in this series. I did a channeling with my head wired to a brainwave machine, EEG machine. And there were many unusual things that happened in my brain during that channeling state. One of the most profound things is that there are certain centers of the brain that are responsible supposedly for processing the personality. During the channeling state, my personality center is shut off. So if I'm not there, who's speaking? So here we have a picture of what disconnects when Daryl begins to channel. And you can see the areas in blue, the functional Broadman areas, we call them, um, that are not used when he is channeling. And it appears that he disconnects from his personal sense of self. He disconnects from the experience of pain. Now, what increases when he begins to channel is, first of all, his processing speed. And processing speed is a very interesting phenomenon because what happens is it develops early in childhood. And by about the age of five or six, and certainly nine or 10 maximum, we reach a set point. And this set point doesn't usually change during the lifetime. And in Daryl's case, it actually went up when he began to channel. And it increased when he listened. The actual frequency of the processing speed was tuned to an exact frequency all over the brain. Now we're looking at Daryl's anterior cingulate while he's channeling. And you can see the red areas there. There is actually gamma frequencies that I found in his anterior cingulate. And gamma frequencies relate to the higher mind. And gamma frequencies are often found in Tibetan monks and people who meditate a lot. To summarize sort of what I found here in, in Daryl's brain in comparison with the channeling state, he starts from a very stable resting state. And then he experiences changes that statistically less than 1% of the population would experience in the same way. He increases his processing speed. He tunes it exquisitely to one frequency all over the brain. And then he's able to create a resonant holding environment for the peak performance or the channeling to happen. Uh, he pumps energy into the right frontal cortex and the right auditory cortex so that he can empathize and, and hear very, very clearly. And because of the gamma frequencies in the anterior cingulate, he can shift gears. He'll be able to, to shift gears and navigate cognition, thoughts, and emotions very, very flexibly. And he'll be able to interpret from a higher perspective, from a more evolved place in his mind, much like from the highest mountaintop. Hey, this was actually really interesting. I've always kind of questioned the whole Bashar thing because how do you really know if someone's being honest about such a an amazing ability to be connected to another interdimensional creature. But to hook him up to a brain scan and things like that while he's in the act, that's pretty pretty good. Like, I don't know really where to go with that because maybe he really is being contacted by another being from somewhere else. Well, what do you guys think about this? Do you think that this is actually real or do you think this could have all been a staged performance and a paid off event to make it seem like you could contact someone from a different dimension? Bless is be less. Be less you. When something is really good, we say that. Bless is be less. Be less you. When something is really good, we say that is sick. Another word for good is wicked. That's wicked. The English language is full of hidden spells. This is why we call it spelling. Because every word you say is creating torus fields, which is energy and frequency. Frequency is the only thing that can penetrate your body without your consent. You can choose what you put into your body, but you cannot choose what you hear. Every frequency you listen to and produce has an effect on your cells and electromagnetic field. And when this field becomes destroyed, your body becomes destroyed. Because energy and frequency comes before physical matter. It is the creator of physical matter. 
English is the most spoken language in the world. They want everyone to speak it because it's filled with double meaning words which cast hidden spells. Mourning is the feeling you feel when someone has died. Why do you think the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue? Hey, I found this extremely interesting. I've heard people reference words being used as spells, and I find that extremely fascinating because what if that is the case? What if we were taught our language because it is a suppressive language and we do not know the real language that we actually had at birth? I, I find that this is really interesting. I'm about to say something really controversial. You don't have to balance all of your other chakras in order to open your pineal gland. I have to respectfully disagree with you, my friend, because I think this is just another one of those things that people heard somewhere and they started telling everyone and everyone else started saying it because they just thought it was a thing. So first off, when I say open and activate the pineal gland, I am not talking about the chakra. Even when I'm talking about the third eye, I am still not talking about one of seven chakras. And even though I say chakra and not chakra the way it's supposed to be said, doesn't mean I don't understand them. What I told everyone to do in this previous video is something everyone should do regardless if they're spiritual or not. What I explained in that video was simply biological to decalcify and defluoridate the pineal gland, which will allow better blood flow and better electrical flow so the pineal gland will metabolize serotonin, melatonin, and dimethyltryptamine. And as many people know, dimethyltryptamine is the most powerful hallucinogen known to humankind. And since the pineal gland has been associated with the third eye and been associated with spiritual sight, and DMT gives us spiritual sight when we do things like take ayahuasca, it only makes sense that all those things are connected. But at the same time, this says nothing about six other potential energy centers that are connected in some process. What I was talking about was real, physiological, evidence-based science explaining to you why the pineal gland does not work and how to fix it. The issue that people have when they say that their other chakras were not balanced, by the way, very uh, sort of nebulous explanation. My chakras were balanced, like I said with the pineal gland. What does it mean? If so, then how? What do you mean when you say balance your chakras? What you're trying to say is, you got that organ that is processing a lot of information and consciousness, and you've just opened up a bunch of doors in your mind that you haven't been prepared for in many years because you've been shut off. You've been money-minded because, you know, we live in a money world which really affects the pineal gland negatively. Or because you're not getting the blood flow there, you're not metabolizing serotonin, melatonin, and dimethyltryptamine. So now you're having all these new peak experiences that you're not comfortable with, so they're overwhelming you. So when people open their third eye and then because they didn't balance their other chakras that's not true at all what's happened is you're being subjected to what you should really be like but that you're not used to since you haven't had that experience since you were a kid when you got fluoridated and you got put on all these psychological programs that took you away from the understanding of spirit and great spirit and what this reality is so you're just being overwhelmed the only thing you have to do you don't have to balance all your other chakras you have to deal with your fear you have, to, you have to let go of the resistance and you have to surrender and accept the truth of reality that you now see better because you physiologically improved a very important part of your brain that helps you to see reality for what it is because of melatonin, serotonin, and dimethyltryptamine. If you are at all interested in understanding the beautiful balance of science and spirituality, make sure you check out the website. I'm trying to help people to have a critical, rational mind in understanding the supernatural and mystical, because there's a balance there. If we continually just say things and we're not sure what they mean, or we dive into all these weird groups and cults and mythologies, we're not going to get anywhere productive. So we have to have a rational, scientific mind balanced with an intuitive, spiritual one. If any of that sounds like a good idea to you, check out the website, thecosmicman.com. Consider becoming a member. It's free. You get access to groups and you can talk to like-minded people like you. I might look into more about chakras and how to unlock each chakra. I'm very interested in this. I've heard a lot of people talk about this kind of stuff. What's your take on chakras? Do you think that they're real? Do you think that the pineal gland is something that actually can be decalcified or it is calcified? I am pretty interested in it, so if you guys are cool with it, I'll probably dive a little bit deeper into the chakra realm. 
We'll see, though. ChatGPT just drew us a picture of God. Here is an image of an adorable bunny sitting in a grassy field. Make it happier. Make it even happier. Like that bunny's happy as f Make it happier. Happier. You are not understanding. It needs to be far more happy. And it's a bunny, again, even more trippy. Here's an image of a bunny representing a form of joy that surpasses the concept of happiness. A level of bliss that expands beyond all universes and matter. Here's an image of an entity that transcends the form of a rabbit, embodying a happiness so vast and powerful, it permeates all dimensions and universes. Yeah. Yo, that's wild, but go one more. Yeah, here's an image of a bunny transcending into a physical form of a boundless happiness, evolving into the purest embodiment of joy. Here is the image of an entity that embodies the ultimate form of happiness, transcending all known beings and concepts. This entity is the very essence of happiness, the only existing being, and the defining force of all existence. There it's God. It I wouldn't necessarily say that that's God. In fact, I'm kind of curious as to where does ChatGPT get this information to give those examples of what supreme happiness is like. To be honest, that God figure, if you've ever watched Futurama, there's an episode where Bender, the robot, he gets this, I don't remember exactly what happened, but he ends up having life on his body. And this life is so amazing to him, and they look at Bender as a god. And eventually, this civilization destroys itself due to war, things like that. And, he, and Bender witnesses this happening as it's on his body. Eventually, everything is destroyed, and he's just floating through space, Bender is. And eventually, he finds what is known to be God. And it's just this cosmic-looking galaxy that has all these lights in it. And it, it honestly kind of looked like that image of the supreme happy bunny from ChatGPT. So it makes me wonder, where did ChatGPT get that image to put that together? Because I have a feeling that's already an example that's been used many times throughout TV, through in books of God's image. I watched a rat trip a mousetrap, a rat trap today. Have you ever seen this? Yes, watch this. So look at this rat. This rat goes, he's e he realizes that's a trap. There's a nice piece of cheese on it. So he brings a stick and he trips the fucking trap. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. How smart are those little motherfuckers? That little tiny ass brain. How smart is he? He's using tools. He's using a tool, that's right. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, it's really incredible. And he knows what he's doing. He didn't even freak out. Look, see see how he reacted? No, it didn't startle him at all. At all. No. Just until recently, we've realized how intelligent ravens, how intelligent ravens and crows are. About uh, they can use tools. They they understand water displacement. So if they can't drink out of something, they'll drop rocks into it so the water level raises so that they can drink out of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's brilliant stuff. Well, they're so clever. They're so clever. And it's so interesting our thoughts about intelligence. I mean, to be honest, I think that Joe is probably blowing this way out of proportion. Mouse traps have been around for a very long time, so it's it's only natural for creatures to learn what's safe and what's hazardous through trial and error. And like I said, mouse traps have been around for a very long time, so eventually, especially in cities and things like that, they're going to learn that a mouse trap is dangerous. Now, is that smart and clever? Indeed, yeah, for sure. But it's not like that. <laughs> So if you guys notice, this is how you find energy spots. You find cactuses growing out of the same spot, two of them. This area is very, very intense. And then if you look at the tree, you can see all the winding. This is how you know you're standing on top of a vortex or a very powerful energetic ley line. There might be water underneath here, might be gold, silver, materials. There's something spiraling underneath, which is causing everything else to spiral. And then create this massive growth, which if you look at how large this cactus is, it's just astounding look up here we can see another spiral going on with the cactus showing that we're on the vortex and we're just three feet away from the other cactuses and then we see tier two cactus tree cactus all growing in the same spot out of the rocks and this is how you know that you're in another high energy spot because we can see it here and if we pan over here we can see the exact same thing on this side as well, too. Those are some really big cacti. 
I found this pretty interesting in the, the theory of there's a spiral, there could be different types of high energy materials underneath those certain spots. That's pretty cool. What are your thoughts on this kind of information? Because I've never heard of this before. <laughs> I don't have ringing in my ears like tinnitus, but this does happen to me a lot where I'll just be doing something and next thing you know I hear really just deafening almost and then it goes away pretty quick. Does this happen to any of you from time to time or do you know if this is some kind of bad medical condition and I, I probably need to get checked out or something? Or am I just getting straight download? I'm not 100% sure what that means necessarily either though. Oh God! <sighs> that made me jump a little bit, I'm not even gonna lie. Something is wrong here. Yeah, give away. Dad, Charles, give away. Charles, thank you very much. Give away. Thank I'm sure you guys know my thoughts about NASA. I'm not saying that it's not a real company. I definitely believe it is a real company. I think that they're a money laundering company, but I do also think that they are working for the military and in for space as well. But you can definitely tell these videos are not real, right? Like, I'm not the only one. And that's so cool. I'm really curious as to how this was made because I kind of want this for my own yard. Someone in NASA had realized that after taking billions of dollars from the American people, if they couldn't make it to the moon, they would fake it to the moon. Obviously, if you're going to somewhere that nobody has been before, you need to have a simulator which recreates that environment as closely as you can. If we come up to this picture here, we see the three scales on which these models were built. We have here the whole moon as one unit. It stands about 20 foot high. We have here behind it a section of the surface of the moon. You'll notice it's curved. And here we have a more detailed section of the lunar surface. What you're saying is that the images which we are told show a camera pointing out the window of the lunar module as it's coming into land on the moon could well have been filmed previously using these large-scale models. That's right. It could well be that what we are looking at are films of realistic models. We have no means of knowing if they were actually taken on the lunar surface or whether what we're watching is part of the simulation exercise and the training exercise. And you'll notice here, on these models, there is a camera track. A camera starting at this end, coming down here, would approach the moon, or appear to approach the moon, and become ever closer towards it. If a spacecraft is in deep space, the only possible explanation for a light seen through the window of the spacecraft is the sun. It's the only bright light in space. If it's not the sun, then it has to be some other artificial light, which implies that that particular image is possibly fiction. The most lethal forms of radiation, of course, are at the higher end of the spectrum. That's gamma rays and x-rays. Uh, we know what ultraviolet can do. If you stay out too long in the sun, you get sunburn and skin cancer and die, and it's all very sad. But gamma rays, and x-rays especially, are particularly lethal to humans, unprotected humans. There was no protection that I have been able to identify. I've been found no reference to it. I found nothing that will tell me what level of protection is offered. So I have to assume none was. 
I've contacted the manufacturers of the spacesuits, and they said there was no radiation protection built into the spacesuits because I asked them if these same spacesuits could be used by technicians to go to Chernobyl or Three Mile Island because the nuclear reactors produce the same radiation as produced in space. And they said, no, not advisable, no protection. This video was pretty interesting to me. I really enjoyed it. I don't know who that individual was, but what they were talking about made a lot of sense to me. I, I do think that the moon landing that we seen was fake. I, I definitely believe that it was fake. Have they gone to the moon and stuff? I really don't know. I do believe that there is people up on the moon still to this day. I think that there's probably warehouses on the moon, to be honest, and they test different types of energy weapons and things like that. Super crazy theory, but... I do believe that we have people on the moon, but I believe that the things that they show us about the moon and the space landings and all of that are fake. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. And like always, I do have links in the description for each video we watched today. So make sure to check them out if any of them were of interest to you. And with that being said, have a good day.